Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm a V King here with another awesome design here for you today. Uh, this is all based off of Vortex Bath Mathematics. So I'll let you see the numbers for yourself, and if you notice anything uh, unique about these numbers, let me know what you find. So far, what I'm catching on to is each uh, each of these numbers are going in some sort of doubling effect. 8, and then you have 17, 1 plus 7, 8, 2 plus 6, 8, 3 plus 5, 8, 4 plus 4, 8. Now, the design is just a prototype, obviously. I was just seeing how well it would uh, work out on this plasma globe, and it seems to be working very, very well. The plasma globe is only a 6-watt globe. Here is the power rating to prove to you. 12 volts, 500, or wait. Yeah, 12 volts, 500 milliamps, that's 6 watts. All right, so we plug that back in. You see that I have my 6 watts going. Um, now, it's hard to get connection to the ground right now, but uh, we're about to fix that. All right. Okay, so let's get to phase one. This is a 79-point coil. Each point is going 36 jumps per point. 36 goes into 79, and it ends up creating the dupli the, the doubling effect of numbers. Let's see, 3 right here, then you have 12, 1 plus 2, 3, 21, 2 plus 1, 3, 30, 3 plus 0, 3, 39, 3 plus 9 is 12, 1 plus 2, 3, and the sequence keeps going on, and it's a it's a doubling effect. This is directly this directly corresponds with Marco Rodin's vortex vortex based based mathematics. Jeez, I can't talk today. Um. Anyways, uh, what's unique about this coil is just how much radiant energy it's able to pull through the center here. Uh, for those of you that don't know much about how uh, magnetism works you should really look into magnetics a little bit because it's very fascinating. Uh, research Edward Leedscown in before you do. Okay, so this globe right here is is working at Planck's constant, te technically. This gas, there's a couple of different gases in here like krypton and I believe carbon dioxide. So it doesn't get hot. Th these types of gases don't get hot when you touch when you touch the glass, you could hold your hand there all day. It won't get hot. Okay. So, um, I just want to show you how it works with the fractals. You can see the light right here. You can see the light reflect in certain ways. I hope all of you can see this. And I would classify this coil design as a potential hyperdimensional multi-phase generator system. A lot of words, but... I believe it could it could meet up to the standards. Okay, so and another reason why I believe it's pulling a vacuum is because uh, you know let me get this adjusted here. It's because when I touch the wire, you'll see that my plasma wants to pull downward. Uh, so check this out. Depends on which part. Like right here, you can see the plasma get shorter on this part of the coil if I touch it. So this thing is very unique. Uh, these are, I used 40 brass nails and 39 steel nails just to see how it would induce, if it would make a difference on the induction. Uh, so far it doesn't seem to mess with the high frequency alternating current. If you look into high frequency alternating current, it produces a skin effect, so the skin effect is means it's traveling along the outside of the wire more than the inside of the wire. That means it's able to be captured. It's pulsating through the air, and the air is getting magnetized, and I believe that allows it to pour, pull more magnetic energy downward. See, as the gas stimulates and gets pulled down into the coil, the gas then releases that bit of electricity 
back into the coil and then it recycles back up into the globe. And I believe the more wire that I have here, the more it can recycle that energy up and down, up and down and slosh inside this uh, system. Since it's operating at a, uh, a 20 kilohertz frequency, most people don't realize that that is a super high frequency and this is a lot of energy being produced from it. It's plasma. Plasma is very unique when you think about it. I mean, you can't even get shocked by this type of plasma because it's in a condensed uh, sealed globe. So let's just see how much power this thing can pull. So this is a four and a half ohm coil. And it's only got one layer wrapped on it. The 360 degree turns here is just to help with the induction of air or energy that it's able to create and pull down it's since it's putting off an EMF field. So let's check this out here. Oh, hang on. Okay. So we got one bulb to light, and what's unique is the efficiency of the light bulbs. Like this light bulb I find very, very unique because it's super efficient. There's a little circuit right inside of this right here. There's a little circuit in there that picks up very sensitive, it's, it's, it's very sensitive to high frequencies. See, so watch this when I, since my body is a superconductor, check out what happens when I do this. The EMF coming out of my body goes into the circuit, right, and it lights that bulb. So this is 6 watts powering a 4.5 watt bulb, and then I have access energy on top of that. Hang on, let me get it adjusted here. See? And then it parasitically goes to this one, and it'll keep going... Okay, these are two LED bulbs right here. Let me get it adjusted better. Okay, so here's another LED. And I'll connect these two together. See? And they light up. And you'll notice that when I do it, um, there's, there's plenty of energy still producing in the ball which is making me think that over unity is possible here because of that. See, check this out. Here we go. We'll connect these together. See how there's no strain on the ball. How does that happen? You know, and then I have, <laughs> I can do that. And even cause a stress on the bulb and make this one semi, <sighs> But if it's not hooked up right, see now it's barely lighting this one. Okay, uh, now for the last thing I want to do, I want to take a reading after it reads this bulb. I'm going to take one before and after and watch what happens. Now let me pause this. Okay, and then for this last experiment, I want to uh, use a bowl of dirt as my superconductive ground because it's a really big pain to use my wall outlet as a ground. It makes people think that I'm pulling energy from my my power grid supply somehow. Don't know how without shocking myself, but I'll solve that issue. Doesn't require much. The dirt has bacteria in it. Right. Okay, so I have it set up like this here so that way the uh, EMF can really connect to the dirt. I'm going to move it out just a little so nobody thinks it's getting shorted out. I'm going to turn on my voltmeter here. Okay. And we are going to connect my primary lead here. And this is open circuit. 
we have uh, 100 millivolts at 2 to 3 amps, which is pretty decent. Now, when we ground it, amps are getting higher. All right. Now, when we connect our bulb, right, we have we have current going through it, right? So my power should be getting lower, but um, as you can tell, it is not. Actually, I can extend it. I can extend the range of it. Oh, come on. Let me pause this video real quick. Perfect. Now, if you look, you'll notice. Oh my gosh, this is this is just terrible. Okay, I touch the bowl, it gets brighter, and then I touch the circuit. Oh wait, I can't do that. There it goes. It's still staying. Oh, let me. Oh, there we go. So the bulb gets brighter and it still stays uh, between 2 and 3 amps. Now that's obviously not even a good connection, but it's resonating throughout the dirt and it's making my bulb brighter. So I need more coils. More coils. Please don't forget to subscribe, guys. I believe I'm onto something. Oh, you want to see the, the voltage? We have, we have 100 millivolts. Oh wow, and if I connect my body to it to help, if I connect the other lead, the voltage still gets higher. If I connect the other lead to my uh, right hand and keep this one connected to that part of the circuit, wow, and now it's still saying 4 amps. So, alright guys, I hope this gives you a better idea of what I'm doing. I'll keep you updated. Peace.